sorry for bursting in like this, but there's a very attractive man in reception, and he says he's here to fix the coffee machine. Will it end? It's not broken. It works perfectly well, and we still have plenty of paper cups, stirrers, white and brown sugar, coffee, and even two types of tea. Well, so then tell him that we don't need anything and that the machine works just fine. But he's here now, and he's very attractive. And I thought perhaps we could have him check the machine just in case. I see. Well, perhaps we could spice up the day a bit. Let him in. Certainly. Thanks. This is Mrs. Cunningham, the boss. Good afternoon. Hi. Troy. Yeah, I'm here to repair the coffee machine. So Linda says. And where is it? We also have one of your vending machines with chocolates and biscuits. You see, Linda and I have a sweet tooth, but we also have certain dietary requirements. I see. Some of my clients are allergic to wheat, and some are vegans. Linda's a vegetarian, aren't you, Linda? Yes. Yes, I am. So, is it possible to have some wheat-free snacks and some that are suitable for vegans as well? Well, I'm not sure. I'm just a technician. I repair the machines. Well, perhaps we can have them send us a brochure with the products. Sure. And uh, the coffee machine? No problem. It works just fine. But perhaps um, there is a small problem with the hot chocolate. Um, it tends to be a bit watery. Is there any way to make it creamier? Let's have a look. Linda, why don't you show Troy where the machine is? Of course, Mrs. Cunningham. Hi there. Welcome with Anthony to your business workout. Ready for a training session? Or do you need a break instead? Today, we're taking a look at some vocabulary regarding coffee breaks at work. So let's get started. Many companies have a coffee machine. Do you have a coffee machine where you work? Or a vending machine that sells snacks and drinks? In Miranda's office, they have both a coffee machine and a vending machine. And they work well but Linda wants the technician to stay. She thinks he's attractive, and they want to spice up the day, make it more interesting. So they ask him to repair the machine anyway. Let's see now, what items does she mention when she talks about the coffee machine? Paper cups to drink out of. stirs to stir the coffee when you add sugar. Do you take sugar in your coffee? Do you prefer white sugar or brown sugar? I like white sugar myself. The machine also makes tea and hot chocolate. Miranda says the hot chocolate is watery. That's the excuse to make Troy stay. She asks if there is a way to make the hot chocolate creamier. I agree, though. Hot chocolate has to be creamy, don't you think? What about the vending machine? Miranda and Linda both have a sweet tooth. They like sweet things. But they have certain dietary requirements in the office. That means they can only eat certain things. Linda's a vegetarian, and Miranda has some vegan clients. Vegans don't eat any animal products, and nowadays there are snacks that are suitable for vegans. She also says some clients are allergic to wheat, so they need some wheat-free snacks in the vending machine too. Do you have any special dietary requirements? And do you have a sweet tooth like Miranda and Linda? Come to think of it, a creamy hot chocolate and some biscuits sound very appetizing after this workout. 
Anyway, keep practicing. I'll meet you in the next training session. Well, I'm sorry to say that there are quite a few mistakes in this report of yours. Mistakes? Are you sure? Yes. But Linda can type it again, right? Sure, she can, but I'm a bit worried about her, you know. Why? Linda is a high flyer, but these days she is working too much and she's making some embarrassing mistakes. Such as? Well, such as sending an email to Mr. Scorn instead of Mrs. Scorn. You know that couple going through the troublesome divorce. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I see. Linda is a nice girl, but she is probably overworked, underpaid, and frustrated. Are you saying that I'm treating her badly? No, I just think that maybe she has too much to do, and she needs less work and more motivation. What do you suggest? Find another secretary. <laughs> Are you joking? She handles my phone calls, she writes emails, she deals with the clients, and she speaks both German and Spanish fluently. I can't imagine working without her. Right, I know. It's hard without a good secretary. So? Try and do something to make her feel more motivated. Motivation and job satisfaction are at the basis of everything. Hmm. For instance, give her something different to do and ask for her opinion from time to time. A pay rise is also a good idea. Well, sure. A pay rise is always a nice way to get what you want from an employee. Hello and welcome to this business training session. Today we are talking about some terms related to job satisfaction. Quite an interesting subject, isn't it? Just like Linda, more and more people feel less motivated and frustrated at work. As you can see, Linda is not satisfied with her job. When we talk about job satisfaction, we mean the feeling of happiness and success a worker gets from his job. Job satisfaction is also related to motivation. People are motivated when they have an interest or ambition that makes them want to succeed. The reason Linda does not have this motivation is probably due to the fact that she is overworked, which means that she has too much work to do and underpaid, that is, paid too little for the work she does. She is probably also frustrated. You feel frustrated when you are angry and depressed because you cannot get what you want. To solve these problems, Al says that you can do a number of things, including ask for a pay raise, which is an increase in the fixed amount of money you receive for your job. What about you? Do you feel that you have a satisfying job or do you feel frustrated and not sufficiently motivated? Linda is a high flyer. A high flyer is a person who has a lot of ability and a strong desire to be successful. And because of this, people expect them to do a lot. Miranda says that Linda is snowed under with work. To be snowed under with something means to have so much work that you have problems doing it all. I'm afraid these are quite common problems for most working people, right? Linda can do some things well and some others badly. Well and badly are both adverbs of manner. An adverb of manner tells you how something happens or how we do something. Some other examples of adverbs of manner are quickly, terribly, fast, happily, come quickly, oh, I'm terribly sorry. Anyway, I'm terribly sorry that our time is up, so I will quickly say goodbye. 
See you next time for another workout. Hmm. The only way to spend any time alone together these days is in the office. Yes, but it is interesting. <laughs> at least we can have some privacy. Ray, mm -hmm. honey, I have an appointment at 2. I want to have lunch first and I don't want to... See, I show you affection and you think about work. It's not my fault we don't spend any time together. You are a workaholic, Miranda. Me? Yes. In fact, you have such a full diary, you don't even have time to enjoy life. That's not true. I enjoy... Yes, it is. You are an ambitious achiever, and job satisfaction is important to you. But remember, the human factor is important, too. Thanks, hon. I come here to relax and see my husband, and instead I feel like one of your patients. I care about your well-being. And I suggest you eat better, too. Oh, Ray, please don't start. Stress causes people to eat unhealthy food. I like unhealthy food. Eating is one of life's greatest pleasures. And eating food I like is important, too, isn't it, doctor? Of course. Everything we eat has a certain vibration. And if we eat things that aren't in harmony with us, our bodies don't get the energy they need. Do you know what my body needs right now? Some Scottish rock oysters. Accompanied by a chilled glass of Chardonnay? You got it. Hello again. Time for our workout. We all know that our diet is very important, but I have to agree with Miranda. Eating is one of life's greatest pleasures, so we have to enjoy it too. Now to our health and body care session. Ray is a doctor, and he knows the benefits of a healthy diet and eating healthy food. That is food that's good for you, and also gives you the energy you need for your busy lifestyle. Stress causes people to eat unhealthy food. So although it may be food we like and it lifts our morale, makes us feel good and relaxed, it can also have negative effects. Not only on our physical well-being, because it's not good for us, but it can have negative psychological effects as well. How many of us eat our favorite food like chips or cake and then feel guilty? because we know it's bad for us and we shouldn't eat it, but we eat it anyway. I, for one, love fish and chips, but I know fried food is unhealthy. However, when I'm stressed or I don't have time to cook, I often have fish and chips for lunch and then feel very guilty because I know, I know I shouldn't have eaten them. It's better to have a healthy chicken salad or even a sandwich. Of course, Miranda knows all of this. Ray probably often reminds her to eat well because she says, Ray, please don't start. It seems as though she hears it a lot, but it's just because he loves her and cares about her well-being. She's certainly very busy. She has a full diary, lots of appointments, and things to do. In fact, Ray calls her a workaholic, which means she works too much. She's an ambitious achiever. She wants to be successful in her career, but Ray thinks she doesn't have time to enjoy life, which isn't good. We have to enjoy life and relax from time to time. Don't forget, that's healthy too. So take your time, have a rest, but don't forget to practice your English. I'll meet you in the next session. Bye. So, Linda, how do you feel? Not very well, actually. I'm under a lot of stress at the moment, and I'm always tired. But I can't sleep at night, so I'm even more tired the next day, and it's causing some problems at work. What kind of problems? I make a lot of silly mistakes. I do things like forget to call clients or wash the keyboard. It drives my boss crazy. Wash the keyboard? Yes, I know. I can't believe it myself. You're obviously a little absent-minded at the moment, Linda. 
A little. Is anything in particular worrying you, or is it just stress? Stress, I think. But now I'm also worried about my job, and that does not help me sleep at night either. What can you tell me about your health? I'm basically healthy. I get sick, but just a cold or the flu. And what can you tell me about your lifestyle? It's basically healthy too. Do you smoke? No, I don't. Drink? No, thanks. <laughs> no.、Uh, do you drink? Oh no. <laughs> yes, well, not much. I have a few glasses of wine if I go out for dinner. Do you, or does anyone in your family have a history of alcohol abuse? No. Why? Do you think I drink too much? Absolutely not. I don't even know how much you drink. Besides, I like drinking wine myself. It's just one of the questions I ask all my patients. Nothing personal. Right. Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions? No. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm usually a calm, easy-going person. I'm not always so edgy. Please go on. Do you practice any sports? I like going jogging in the morning, but I hate waking up early, so I rarely go. You mentioned your boss. What can you tell me about him? Her. She's a woman. We have quite a good rapport. I enjoy working for her. She's hardworking, but demanding. Actually, she can be a bit of a dictator at times. Sounds like someone I know. Really? Who? Oh, my wife, Miranda. She's a lawyer too. Oh my God. We are talking about the same person. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this session of health and body care. Today, we're going to talk about stress and lifestyle. Taking care of your health and body means having a healthy lifestyle. Stress is one of the principal causes of health problems and sickness. When people are under stress, like Linda, they become edgy, which means nervous and irritable, and Absent-minded, Linda, for example, has trouble sleeping, so she's tired and makes mistakes at work. She forgets to do important things, or does silly things like wash the keyboard of her computer. Do you get edgy and make mistakes like Linda when you're under a lot of stress? I know I do. Well, having a healthy lifestyle. Is also important to combat the more serious side effects of stress, like sickness, illness, depression, or alcohol abuse, which is when people drink too much to calm their nerves and anxiety. Luckily, Linda has quite a healthy lifestyle. She doesn't smoke. She doesn't drink. Well, a bit of wine with dinner is okay. She likes going jogging. The only problem is that she hates waking up early. Me too. That's why I go to the gym in the evening. What about you? Do you exercise regularly? It's very important if we don't want to get sick or ill. I notice that when I exercise regularly, I feel much better, and I hardly ever get the flu. Sometimes I get a cold. But I just take lots of vitamins and sleep. That's also very important: getting enough sleep. Another important aspect to consider for a healthy lifestyle is your work environment. Do you have a good rapport with your colleagues and your boss? Linda has a good rapport with her boss. She enjoys working for her. She says she's hardworking. But demanding. Is your boss very demanding, or are you demanding at work? Can you remember two adjectives Linda uses to describe herself? 
She says she's usually a calm, easygoing person. Easygoing, that means you are relaxed and tolerant. Are you easygoing or demanding? It's probably good to be a bit of both and not too much of either. Take care. See you again soon for another training session. Bye. I'm so hungry. Well, you're in the right place. Do you want something sweet or savory? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, actually, no. I don't know. Something savory, just a sandwich. Okay. Ham and cheese or tuna? Um, not tuna. Ham and cheese sounds good. Or maybe something sweet. I don't know. Are you okay? Yes. Uh, well, I'm a little nervous. I have a date. Oh, I see. Anyone I know? I don't think so. His name's Rick. He's from Ireland. I love Ireland. Irish people are so friendly and fun. Well, I like him. I'm sure. So do you want something sweet to pep you up? Oh, no. I haven't got time, ma'am. I have to meet him in 20 minutes. Oh, God, help. Calm down. You can't go on an empty stomach. Let me make you a quick snack to take away, and you can eat it on your way there. Okay, yes, you're right. So, tell me, what's he like? Handsome? Very. He's tall, average build. He's got dark hair and green eyes. He's very shy and extremely creative. He's an artist. Oh, sounds perfect. He is. Going away? Hmm? Oh, I wish. I need a holiday, just to get away from it all. I'm tired of London. I'd like to go on a trip somewhere. To the seaside? Yes. A seaside holiday on a beautiful, deserted beach and sleep under the stars. Or even to the mountains and spend a week camping out in the wild. A trekking holiday? That's not very relaxing. But it's different. You don't have to take the bus and the tube and walk through busy streets. Even a sightseeing holiday sounds wonderful right now. Anything, just not here. Your sandwich is nearly ready. Would you like a quick glass of wine? A glass of wine, just what I need. A toast to your date. And to your holiday. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back. Ready to start working out? Great. Our main topics today are food and holidays, but we've quite a lot to cover, so let's get started. Did you see our episode? Sarah has a date with a handsome Irish boy, Rick, and she's very nervous, isn't she? She doesn't want to be late to meet him, but she's hungry. Do you remember what Sarah says about Rick? That he's shy and creative. Well, he is an artist after all. And to describe him physically, she says he's tall and average build, which means he's neither fat nor thin, and he's got dark hair and green eyes. Emily tells her that she can't go on an empty stomach without eating anything, so she prepares a quick snack for her to take away. But poor Sarah's so nervous that she can't even decide if she wants something sweet or savory. In the end, Emily prepares something savory, a ham and cheese sandwich to take away. While Sarah's dreaming about Rick, Emily is dreaming of a holiday. She wants to go on a trip somewhere because she's bored of London. Difficult to imagine someone being bored of London, but it happens when you live and work in a place for a long time. She wants to get away from it all. Do you ever feel like that? That you need a holiday and want to get away from it all even just for a week? 
A seaside holiday on a beautiful deserted beach always sounds good when you want to relax. Emily talks about sleeping under the stars. Sounds romantic, doesn't it? To sleep in the open at night and just see the stars all around. She also likes the idea of a trekking holiday in the mountains. Not quite as relaxing because trekking means physical exercise, but spending a week camping out in the wild sounds exciting too. She's so desperate to get away that she says even a sightseeing holiday sounds wonderful. Sightseeing means visiting all the important monuments and buildings in a city. That's not very relaxing either. Personally, I prefer to relax on a beach for my holidays. Back to Sarah and Emily. They make a toast at the end to wish each other luck. Not the kind you can eat. But when you touch glasses with someone, look them in the eyes and say cheers. So, shall we make a toast? A toast to your English, which I'm sure is getting better. See you soon. Take care. Lucille, how are you? I'm fine. I'm a bit tired, maybe. This week we have a lot of work to do. You're right. I am overworked. And I need a break. Well, let me think about it. Thanks for calling. Bye. I think Lucille's right. I need a break. I should go somewhere. Let me have a look at some maps. Russia. India? China? Japan? Don't know. Australia could be a good travel destination. I can book a flight right now. <laughs> Let me see. Okay. Cheap flights to Australia. Flying from London Heathrow and flying to Melbourne. Departure date. Oh, I don't know. Maybe the 30th of December. It's summertime over there. Maybe I can wear my bikini on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Return date, 25 January. Passengers, one adult, no children. Good. Search now. 1,300 pounds? Not so cheap. Let me see if taxes and fees are included. Still too expensive. Can't imagine the cost plus accommodations. What are some other options? Maybe a package tour is more convenient. Lucille may be able to give me some useful addresses. She always has to travel for her job. Lucille? Sorry, it's me again. I am looking for a package tour to Australia. Can you give me some useful addresses? Yes. Okay, I'm ready. www.globaltours.com www.adventuretours.com <laughs> slash packages. Oh, www. 
backpackertour.com. Yes, thank you. Backpacking, I don't particularly like the idea of carrying a heavy weight on my back. Uh, sleeping in a tent, eating beans for a week, fun. <laughs> I don't think so. That's not my idea of a holiday. I'd rather stay at home. Hmm. Well, thank you anyway, Lucille. Maybe staying at home is a better idea. Bye. Hi, and welcome to our travel and entertainment session. Today, we're going to talk about booking flights, organizing holidays, and how to find good travel options on the internet. Just like most of us, Emily is overworked, which means that she has too much work to do and needs a break. That is a short period of rest. First, you have to decide on your travel destination. Then, just like Emily, you can search the internet for cheap or low-cost flights. When searching the internet, you can either type in what you are looking for or use a specific internet address. When it's a www dot internet address, you say www.globaltours.com or www.adventuretours.com backslash packages, for example. After opening a web page, you must insert the information required. You have to specify where you are flying from, where you want to depart from, and where you are flying to, your destination. You must also indicate your departure and return dates, that is, when you want to leave and when you want to come back. Finally, you have to specify the number of passengers, how many of you want to go, and how many of you are adults and how many are children. When you click on the search button, you see the available flights and what the flight fares are. That is, the money you have to pay for the flight. It is a good idea to check if the taxes and fees are included. That is, extra money that you pay for rights and services. Emily thinks that the flight is too expensive because she knows that she has to find accommodation too. Accommodation means a place to stay, such as a hotel, a hostel, a bed and breakfast. Instead of organizing everything by yourself, you may consider a package tour or holiday tour. This is a holiday or tour where the travel, the accommodation, and sometimes the meals are all included in the price and you pay before you go. One option is a backpacking tour, which means going on a long distance trip, carrying your clothes, food, etc. in a backpack. This is obviously for young and adventurous people and Emily does not seem particularly interested. Well, to tell you the truth, I do not feel particularly attracted by the idea of carrying a heavy backpack all the time. But my friend says that it is an unforgettable experience. What do you think? Well, our time is over. Keep practicing your English, and I'll meet you in the next training session. See you soon.